Students often struggle to express scientific concepts clearly. Sometimes they lack the vocabulary, but other times they may fall back on prior misconceptions or natural theories rather than the new concepts they have learned in class. An excellent way for students to learn how to explain their ideas accurately and clearly is to critique the ideas of others, learning from examples and non-examples alike. On day 30, the key learning activity for students will be to critique, correct, and clarify an incorrect explanation of a natural phenomenon. Here, we see two photos, labeled before and after. An analog clock placed in each photo suggests that they were taken about 10 minutes apart from each other. In the before photo, we see an area of wet pavement. After, we see that most of the pavement is dry, with only a much smaller area still dampened. What happens to the water when the puddle dries on the sidewalk? The explanation given is, when a puddle dries on the sidewalk, the water disappears completely. This is because the air, after a storm, creates an energy that makes the water disappear. Water will only be created again by the sky during the next storm. Before we discuss this explanation, take a moment to imagine that one of your students has just given this as an explanation in your class. What would you think? What questions might you ask the student to further reveal or clarify their thinking? What gaps in understanding can you identify? What might you tell your student? This explanation is attributed on slide 14 to a younger sibling, and it's a reasonable explanation for a young child to come up with, especially one who may not have learned yet about the way that water moves around the earth and the atmosphere, and specifically someone who does not know about evaporation, a key component of the correct explanation. However, it's not enough just to identify that this explanation is incorrect. We need to understand why it's incorrect so that we can help guide students toward a better explanation. This explanation is actually incorrect in several important and interesting ways. This explanation shows several misconceptions. First, matter, like water, cannot disappear. Matter is never created or destroyed, but it can change form. In this case, the student recognizes that the water is no longer visible, but has not yet identified that this is the result of the liquid water evaporating into invisible water vapor gas. The student also says that the air after a storm creates an energy that dispels the water. It's not clear why the student says this, but perhaps this is a reference to their prior personal experience of seeing puddles disappear after a storm. It's common for children to create inaccurate though reasonable explanations for common repeated observations like these. In this case, the student is not entirely wrong in that energy from light and from the movement or heat of the air does in fact cause the water to evaporate. Finally, the student says, that the water will only be created again by the sky in another storm. This shows that the student has identified the source of the water as the sky, or a storm in the form of precipitation. However, the student does not yet have an accurate idea of how the water gets from the ground in things like puddles back up to the sky in things like clouds and storms. Ultimately, the student is missing two key concepts. First, the student does not understand that the process of evaporation can transform a visible liquid into an invisible gas. This may be the result of a lack of knowledge around phase changes, but it could also result from a deeper lack of understanding that matter is made of atoms and molecules and cannot be created or disappeared. Second, the student is missing an understanding of how water can travel around the earth, across the surface or through the atmosphere, changing its form between solid, liquid, and gas as it does. Now that we understand this explanation is inaccurate, let's think about why someone might come up with or believe this explanation. Remember, some of our students might read this explanation and not see any issues with it at all. It's important to get inside their minds so we can help guide them to a new, more accurate explanation. So why might students believe this? There are many reasons why a student might arrive at this explanation and think it's satisfactory. This explanation may result from a simple lack of information or prior knowledge, but it might also stem from deeper misconceptions that students have internalized. For one, students may not realize that gases are invisible. For example, many people believe that clouds are an example of a gas, but clouds are actually collections of condensed liquid water drops or ice crystals, not gas. Another issue could be that students are not aware that solids, liquids, and gases are all made of atoms or molecules. Without that key concept, students may not be able to visualize water particles traveling from a puddle into the air. It will probably be helpful to review that all solids, liquids, and gases are made of atoms, small particles of matter, or molecules, collections of atoms bonded together. Matter in solid, liquid, or gas form can change state with the addition or subtraction of heat energy. It's also clear from the use of the word disappears that this younger sibling is not aware of the law of conservation of matter, which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, although it can change form. 
For example, a phase change from one state of matter to another, or a chemical reaction. Those are both examples of phenomena in which matter changes from one form to another, but the total amount of matter, the total number of atoms, remains constant. Some other common misconceptions may also interfere with students' understanding of this particular phenomena. First, some students may not be familiar with reading or interpreting analog clocks. Be sure to point out that the analog clock is showing that about 10 minutes have passed between the before and after pictures. Students may also believe that water was simply absorbed into the sidewalk, pointing out that the cracks in the sidewalk are visible in the after photo. While this is possible, it doesn't account for the entire puddle. This may also be avoided by reminding students about other times when wet things dry up, like spills at home or wet clothes or towels. So what is a correct explanation? There are many possible ways to explain the phenomenon in the photos. Here's a very detailed version. When a puddle dries on the sidewalk, the water molecules at the surface of the puddle are evaporating into the air. Heat energy from sunlight, or the air around the puddle, is transferred to water molecules at the surface of the puddle. When these water molecules gain enough energy, they evaporate, flying away from the other water molecules in the puddle and into the air as water vapor gas. In other words, evaporation. Although the puddle seems to disappear, this is just the result of visible liquid water turning into invisible water vapor gas. Here's a simpler explanation that might be closer to what a sixth grader would say. When the water in the puddle is heated by the sun or the air, it turns from a liquid on the ground to a gas in the air that we can't see. It doesn't disappear, it just changes state and moves. However, we know that especially when it comes to science, students simply hearing the right answer is often insufficient for them to gain true understanding. So what should we do if students don't see any problems with the incorrect explanation that was provided? Students need to break down their prior misconceptions first, then they can clearly conceptualize the new explanation in order to fully believe it themselves. One way to help students do this is through questioning. Here are some questions that might help guide their thinking. The goal with these questions is not to lead students to a correct explanation, but rather to help them see the limitations of their own current wrong explanations. When they get to a point where they can no longer explain what is happening and why, students might recognize that they lack information or that their explanation is insufficient. This could help them become more receptive to a new explanation and new concepts to replace their old concepts. It might also be helpful to show students more examples of evaporation. For example, in this time-lapse video, water in a glass evaporates when placed under a lamp. However, the plastic wrap at the top of the glass prevents the water vapor gas from disappearing and instead the water vapor condenses back into droplets on the inside of the plastic wrap. It might be helpful to ask students where this water comes from that appears on the inside of the plastic wrap lid. Then they can make a connection to the water evaporating into the air from a puddle. In this simulation from FET, we see many water molecules in liquid form. The average amount of energy in the liquid as a whole is represented by the temperature. Temperature is just a measure of the average thermal energy in a substance. However, there is a lot of variation in energy between the molecules. Notice how some of the molecules are spinning very fast while others are moving more slowly. When a fast moving molecule collides with a slower moving molecule, the fast molecule may slow down as it transfers some of its energy to the slow molecule, which will speed up. Even without the addition of more heat energy, which we can do here at the bottom, a molecule at the surface may suddenly find itself with enough energy to leave the pack. This is evaporation. One molecule at a time flies away from the liquid and becomes a gas. If more heat is added, the chances of a surface molecule evaporating go up because all molecules on average will have more energy to begin with. It might be helpful to think of this like the escape velocity of a rocket as it blasts away from Earth. In this simulation, heat is added through a simulated flame, but for a puddle, heat energy could just as easily come from sunlight or even the air above the surface of the puddle. So. Does the water in the puddle disappear? No, not a chance. Molecule by molecule, the water gained enough energy to change its state from a visible liquid to an invisible gas. In a word, evaporation.